What's going on everyone? Thanks for watching Xbox Tavern. My name is Corey and I'm reviewing Gory. Gory Cuddly Carnage that is. So this game just came out on the Xbox platform and it's, uh, it's a weird one. So let's jump right into it. So as you can tell, Gory is a cat. You play as Gory the cat and you are riding your pal Frank the hoverboard and you are just cruising along these really psychedelic landscapes and you are fighting some really interesting enemies. Now you do this fighting by whipping your hoverboard around, maybe slamming it or just twisting it to slice these guys open. And you're gonna be doing that uh, a lot throughout this game. Additional combat includes shooting missiles as well. Now this is a level-based game where you do have a hub world and you can kind of go back to levels as you please but there are eight levels that will progress the story. Each one concludes in a boss battle, and they are all just increasingly weird and strange. The layout of the levels typically begin as you navigating in a pretty linear path. It's kind of difficult to get lost in this game, not impossible, but once you get through an area, uh, typically in an arena style where you have to defeat all the enemies before continuing, you'll just keep going on the path you were or some kind of rail will appear to get you to where you need to go. Sometimes there will be forks in the road where you have to go left to do that arena, go right, do that one, then come back to like the main area and, and continue forward to progress the level. And then sometimes it's more of a straight line. Now what I don't like about this game is the repetitiveness. Like I said, there are eight levels in this game and they all flow in this similar fashion. And the enemies are mostly the same. As you go throughout the levels, you pretty much get introduced to a few new enemies each time. And so they are added to the small army. Depending on which level you are, you'll get all of them, or maybe you'll get just a few of the different types. But you're doing that on every single level. And again, ultimately leads up to a boss battle. And those mechanics can differ a little bit from each other, but ultimately you are attacking, dealing with the adds and kind of defeating the, the enemy. Now, I was playing on the easiest difficulty. There are three or four difficulty levels that you can pick from. And if you want to 100% the game, you will need to play on the hardest difficulty as those equate to uh, stars that you get at the results screen. Speaking of the results screen, this game kind of encourages replayability. They want you to beat the game in a certain amount of time and get a certain amount of points. They want you to play on the hardest difficulty, etc. You get it and you get stars for those those things. That seems to be all be personal. I have no indication that it relates to any extra story beats, but maybe. One thing the levels do give you is a collectible of a key that is separated into three parts. Once you collect these keys, doors will open up in your hub area, your ship. However, they almost all of them only seem to point to extra clothes. I actually only got the, the keys fully for a few levels. One of those is the first level, and I think those are impossible to miss. I think you have to kind of get them in your way. And one reason I think that is because it actually leads to an area of the ship where your storyline elements are kind of gathered as well as an upgrade booth so that one seems to be impossible to miss uh, there is a training room one on level two that i didn't get and then everything else again seems to be customization based so that if you unlock them all maybe that's an extra story beat as well i don't know but the replayability is there if you really want to do that now talking on a point that i just mentioned the upgrade booth there is an upgrade booth in your ship and in the levels, there's typically at least one upgrade booth somewhere. What you are using to upgrade is a money currency that you get from collecting it around the level, which is, uh, you know, a little bit here and there. But your main money income is going to come from beating a level. Uh, all these stars that I was talking about, the result screen, they will equate to a certain amount of money like tens of thousands of that currency, and it will kind of go into your wallet, which then you could spend. The upgrades include increasing the efficiency of your bash ability and your slice ability, as well as your health and how much health you get if you eat an enemy, things like that. You can also spend it on customizations for your hoverboard, for Gory the Cat, uh, and other things. But the upgrades are definitely where you want to put your money in if you you know want to change the game a bit, make it 
make yourself a little bit more overpowered. Now, as you probably have noticed, this game is very unique. Uh, it's, it's very weird, as I like to call it, and I'm not opposed to weird things. I like weird things in video games, and this one just did not grasp me. I don't know what it was about it, but it, it just something is there that didn't appeal to me, which is unfortunate because, you know, I was looking forward to this game. Again, without doing a lot of research, I was still looking forward to this game, but I kind of hyped myself up a bit and it just, you know, just wasn't for me and that's fine. Now, some of the things that I am knocking the game on are technical issues. It only happened in one level that I can recall, but I lost progress on the whole level pretty much. I had somehow got to a point in the level that I already had been in and I actually got stuck from progressing because there was a wall uh, there. It was one of those arena walls where it only went away if you defeated the enemies, but the enemies were on the other side of the wall. I could not backtrack from where I was so I ended up just dying on purpose for it to respawn me, and it respawned me in that arena. So everything was good. But as I went through that arena and killed all the enemies, I got up to the, the end and where I was supposed to see an enemy, the last enemy, to kill it to progress, that enemy never showed up. Obviously glitched. I, I will note in the same level, I had a controller issue where at some point in that level, a vibration pattern happened and it never stopped. It was a constant vibration for 20 to 30 minutes probably. And the only way to get rid of it was to go out of the game uh, and come back in. Uh, when I did that uh, and noticed that I could not progress this level any further, I actually went to the main hub and there was no warning that I would lose progress, but I was kind of figuring I would. And then I went back to that level. And as I imagined, I had to replay the whole level from the beginning. Once I did that, I kind of noticed where I may have went. So I did not go there again uh, because it was a backtracking area and I progressed a different way. And that way was correct. So somehow I had gotten into an area where I wasn't supposed to be. Don't know how I did that. On this replay though, the game crashed a couple of times. So it was just a really hard level to get through. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I got through it. Overall, the game itself is okay. I think you have to be into the weirdness and you have to be okay with the repetitiveness of the combat because you are just constantly, and you don't have a lot of moves. You are just moving around so quickly. You're just trying to slice anything that you can get your hands on. The only thing that I really found fun in the game was the platforming and that in and of itself was even few and far between. There are chase sequences and you can wall ride and do some very long jumps via the double jump. Those parts were cool and I liked them. So I think a game is there, but I think that it just still needs to be fleshed out more. There you have it. I'm kind of lukewarm on gory, cuddly carnage. By all means, if you like what you're seeing, this is the game, eight levels knock yourselves out. Uh, it's just not one that I can highly recommend to my friends based on what I've played. But if you aren't already over at xboxtavern.com, be sure to go there. I will have a score for the game over there, but that will do it for this video in this review. I've been Corey. I will see you in the next one.